This video is made with the sponsorship of Ecrotech New Zealand, one source for all your beekeeping requirements. Hi, Trev here from Trev Bees on Facebook and YouTube. Today I want to talk to you about making creamed honey, the thick stuff that you put on toast. Better than uh, runny honey on toast because runny honey all runs off and the thick stuff stays here, I can put more on. So, just to show you uh, the starters. Runny honey. And when you tip the container over, it runs around the place. We keep that at 32 degrees. Or in the cupboard in the, in the kitchen. This stuff here is creamed honey. It's gone pretty well rock hard. But a little... Uh, 10 seconds, 15 seconds in the microwave will warm that up and just soften it a little bit, make it nice to spread. Rather strangely, when you cream runny honey, it changes colour and it also changes flavour slightly. So we'll just put that away and put that away. And around over here, that's where I keep all the runny, honey, all the creamed honey, ready for my customers to come along and buy. And we're going to talk about starter honey. No, cut that a little bit about. So to take a recap a little bit on the last video. We have here thick, soft crystallizing honey and it's gone with big crystals in it. It's not heck, not heck of a nice to eat like that. So by putting it in here in the honey warmer for 48 hours we have now turned it into runny honey which is like this however I can't put my starter into there and I'll talk about that in the middle in a minute because that now is too warm and it would melt all the crystals out of the container that I want. So, we've had 48 hours in here to get that, all the crystals out of it. We're then taking it out of the warmer and just left it in the honey house on the floor and we've now got this. It's got a little bit of uh, air and pollen on the top. But I don't worry about that. That'll all get mixed in with uh, the creamed honey and it'll be fine. I like to leave the pollen in there. My customers like the extra pollen in there as well. So the principle of making the creamed honey. Oh, hang on, we'll show you cream honey the cream honey when it's uh, I'll, I'll put about this much into that container uh, and that's the starter so this starter is my own cream honey and it can scrape off quite easily but this is pretty hard you need 10% of starter in the container so 25 kgs there I need about two and a half kgs here there's about two there so that's okay but I can't mix that big thick lump into there because it just won't blend 
So I've taken one of these buckets of uh, ice cream container full, taken it up the house, and I've put this in the microwave. And I microwave it in 30 second bursts. Microwave for 30 seconds and the outside edge gets a little bit warm. Then I cut it with a bread knife or bread, uh, table knife. And then eventually, after two or three goes at 30 second intervals, I end up with this nice soft cream honey. That creamed honey will go into there. I'm going to put on about 10 pound of weight today. How does all this work? Honey crystallizes best at about 8 degrees Celsius. So that's about 40 degrees Fahrenheit for the American friends. We uh, add this 10% into the container of thawed out honey and then we need to mix it up and I'll, I'll talk to the mixers in a minute and then we need to store the honey at around about 8 degrees and it's 12 degrees in the shed here and that works out pretty good uh, this morning when I first came down here it was about 4 degrees so uh, it's fine I'll put it on the shelf until it changes and it takes about a week or 10 days however sometimes during the summer months it's far too warm in here this shed will get up to 30 plus degrees uh, Celsius 85, 90 degrees uh, Fahrenheit and it's far too warm in here for the crystallizing effect to happen, or the creaming effect. So at that stage, I turn the heater element off, and I plug the fridge in, into here, and I stack my honey in here, and I leave it in here until such time as it changes and becomes creamed honey. Depending on the season, how old the honey is, and such like, that can take anything from 10 days to three weeks sometimes a month but the older the honey is the easier it is to cream now almost all honey almost all honey crystallizes like this container full over here there is a few honeys that don't so you can't make creamed honey out of them but for those who do this is what we're going to do now Honey is rather unique in that when it crystallizes, or well, each honey forms different types or sizes of crystals. Clover and Pahutukawa, the New Zealand flower, have very, very fine crystals. And at the other end of, that, of our scale in New Zealand, we have Manuka honey, and it's like road chip. But if we put clover honey crystallized or creamed clover honey in with manuka honey we will actually get nice smooth manuka for, uh, honey with nice smooth creaming equally if we put the manuka uh, crystals in to clover we would get coarse honey okay one of the things that i regularly get asked is where do i get my starter from as i've said before I keep my starter um, from each uh, lot that we do uh, each a uh, lot of cream stuff I refill my container up but I had to start somewhere and I started right here I don't care what brand it is this happens to be Kintail's honey you might like three bees. You might like uh, arataki, whatever. I don't care. You need to find out the honey that you like, that's nice and smooth and whatever, and go and buy a couple of kilo pots. Two kilos is enough. Stick it in a thirty kilo bucket, 
it's not 10% I know but it's close enough if you want buy three kilos but at 20 bucks a kilo nowadays 20 plus dollars a kilo that's becoming a lot of money so you buy uh, clover blend honey um, and I find that that's pretty good I like that I've kept my own honey creaming as a starter there's nothing else just cream just honey and then then we're going to mix it and we'll do that in a minute so originally uh, I used this as my mixer this was the uh, the dough hook off my wife's cake mixer and I put it into a shaft and I extended that uh, and that worked pretty well but it's a little bit slow since then I have a friend in Ashurst who's a stainless steel engineer and he makes these for me uh, cost me about $50 to get them made um, and I can get them made in any length that I like and these run perfectly true because he puts them in the engineering lathe you can see the center in here and uh, gets everything all nicely trued up and puts a nice taper on here so it fits into my drill pre uh, my drill and because honey is so thick I have to use my heavy duty drill to mix it we'll put this slot into here just got to be a little bit careful that we don't break the spatula So it takes a little bit of getting all this honey out of here. So about two and a half kgs in this container. If you fill it right up, it's a bit over three kilos in here. So uh, that's a fair bit. I don't need to have it that full. And if I'm nice and careful and don't get any honey over it, I'll be able to put my next lot of starter straight back into this container. Okay, so that's all nicely emptied out. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to put this in here and I'll make sure it's nice and tight and this gets a bit noisy so don't want to go too fast now you can see how um, the, the runny honey is different from the creamed honey and we need to get this all nice and smooth so we're looking at about five minutes of mixing with the beater you can use that big paddle that I had earlier on and just mix it by hand but trust me it takes a long time
Yeah, you can see how that's starting to blend in, but we've got to keep going until it's all done. These little lumps that are in here, that's uh, the cream honey that has been hard, that I haven't softened every little bit, but by the time we've mixed it all up with the, the mixer, all those will be chopped up. The blades on this are set so it pushes the honey to the bottom, which means the bottom stuff actually gets lifted up. So um, we don't end up with any um, uh, spray so much, but you have to be careful. This stuff that's on the shaft here will flick out and make a mess, so you just need to be mindful of that. Now I'm pushing right to the very bottom to make sure I get it off the bottom but then as I take it out I'm going to have to clean the shaft at the same time. here and just using the variable speed going very slow I just wind that down there like that Normally, when I'm doing this, this is pretty hard on the ears because there's a lot of power going into this uh, drill. Um, I always wear my earmuffs, but not wearing them today because we're making a video. Um, but as you can see, it's starting to come away now, and we've only been going a couple of minutes. Right, I think that's uh, enough. And now I just carefully scrape all the honey off. So that's about it. The honey's now creamed or blended in, ready for potting up. Right, so now we've got all this mixed up. It's ready to be potted. Now, it's essential that you pot this now because... Once the honey is gone like this and it's creamed, you can't pot it up. It's now too thick. So we're going to cream it. We're going to pot it up like as it is. Now I like to put my creamed honey into these pots, nice and tapered. You can get a knife in there. Your bread knife can go in there, and you can scrape everything out. I don't like wasting anything. I can get right down the bottom and I can scrape everything out. My runny honey goes into these and we're going to talk about these pots later on in the next video. They can either have a pressure seal inside here or they can have an induction seal lid. But you can't get up around the corner here to get the honey out and I don't like wasting things. so. These are really good for runny honey because if you tip them upside down and they've got the pressure seal lid or the induction seal lid, nothing runs out. And when I courier my boxes of honey around the place, at times the couriers are not quite as gentle as I would like and I've had 
these pots leak. These ones also have a, a breakout seal on the side so you know as to whether anyone's interfered with the, uh, the pots. So that's the subject of the next video of potting our honey. So uh, that's it from Trev, Trev's Bees, Facebook and YouTube. We'll catch you up when I'm potting honey.